nine years ago, a third grader convinced me to start on this journey that has me here with you on this stage. But I can't start there. It would be a disservice to my nights at Lake Middle School if we did not start this off with a chant. With these values that we go over, our core values, we build culture and community in Lake Middle School. So let me hear it. Honor. Honor. Hard work. Hard work. Humility. Humility. And generosity. generosity. So let's get back to that third grader. Anthony Abeda. I met him, uh, surprisingly, through a challenge by Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff's challenge was to get as many black men that are professionals to come and spend time with students at DCISF Ford. At Ford, black students in particular, black boys, were being overly suspended. So of course I showed up. Anthony, about yay high, afro bigger than he was, third grader, says to me, Staff Sergeant McDonald, you're telling me I can make it from A to Z but you're not gonna be here tomorrow to show me. And it hit me like a brick. I was expecting to come in and share my story and have applause from these little kiddos and walk out feeling great. I never knew the pain that Anthony was going through and why he said what he said. But he motivated me. I took on the battle. And from that day forward at DCISF Ford, I volunteered almost every day to do gardening, take students out into the woods, and build relationships with nature. We'll come back to Anthony. Let's fast forward. My wife, AKA Captain Marvel, AKA Nick Fury, Amanda McDonald, took on a new position at Lake Middle School. Lake Middle School had the worst academic performance in Denver Public Schools, but not just there, in the state of Colorado. When we walked through the hallways before she got uh, selected to be the principal there. This is her first leadership opportunity. We walk into a classroom, and it is pure chaos. We go out into the hallways. Denver Public Schools had to send people from their central office to man the hallways to ensure students got into class. And that didn't work. I remember turning to my wife and saying, whew, we got something on our hands. And just like Captain Marvel and Nick Fury, she's like, we're going to beat that. And deep inside of me, my soldier creed creeps in. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit, and I will never leave a fallen comrade. And that day forward, I sat down with their dean of culture, Mr. Reyes, who was specifically selected because of his connection to community and the rich history he had there in West Colfax and the north side in Denver and we started to create pure magic. Knights of the Nine was one of them. Nine months out of the year, students would come in and learn that particular virtue. We start every school year off with courage, because as Dr. Maya Angelou says, without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently without it. We would select representatives from the neighborhood, from our community that came in and represented that virtue, like uh, Sergeant Miss Outlaw, who was the representative of courage. And for me, I got to see with my own eyes the conviction that I saw within the students that were ditching and not participating and all the apathy that was in that, those classrooms. I saw true believers in front of me in creating this community. Flashpoint. DJ Chone steps into the, the picture. Another community member who heads the Denver DJ School bringing in all types of different opportunities for our students, podcasting, radio, uh, hopping on the radio, just having that opportunity and really disguising education through something that is culturally relevant for our students. And then, of course, there's me. Yeah, old McDonald didn't have a farm. I had a garden. And that was something that I wanted to share, building community. Let's get back. Take a step back over here to Anthony. As of right now, Anthony sits in a detention center. Think about that. If Anthony had not only a classroom to walk into with caring folks, but if he had the opportunity to really dive into his mental health issues, 
as well as his support system and having job opportunities for his support system. Also, a, a, an area where community members come into to support those students. What kind of life and what kind of things would be different for Anthony? We'll come back to that. COVID hits. Everyone across the world is on pause. It doesn't stop in education either. And there was a North Sider in Denver that took on the opportunity to create a small community uh, uh, pub of learning, a pod. So in that small community pod, Joanna Rosa Sines, who usually, when you think of community pods, you think of poverty or uh, privilege, not people in poverty. And Joanna was dealing with a divorce. She had three kiddos. But because of the rich connection she had with her community, she was able to provide 14 students with school lessons in her basement. That's community. Let's get back over here to Lake Middle School. Here we are, taking on new challenges. COVID had just hit. We have all types of issues that we are dealing with. And this is where you come in, and those of you that are watching. We need you. This is a call of action. When I got started, all I had was a Honda Pilot, a shovel, a bag of seeds, and five boys with me. We transformed Lake Middle School. My wife, Jones, Mr. Reyes, and all the other supports that are there. But the job is not done. We need you there. Sure, I can rattle off all the statistics about how segregated Denver Public Schools are, or I can give you the information about and data about trying to close the gaps between black and indigenous people, people of color, children of color, and their white counterparts. Of course, it's discouraging. But how can we help? How can you help? I hope in my heart that by you hearing my story, it will motivate you to take whatever experiences that you had and share that with students in your neighborhood. Or maybe come down to Lake Middle School and be a part of that. There's another thing that's popped up as an opportunity. If there's one good thing I can say about our superintendent at Denver Public Schools is that he has a plan of six community hubs strategically placed across Denver. The only thing that is missing, again, is you. We need community members to be a part of that. We may all not share the same language or we come from the same socioeconomic backgrounds, but I can tell you we love, we have hearts. And this is an opportunity that's been waiting for far too long. This is the time for us to stand together. Even with all the division that's going on within our country, there's one thing that we can stand behind, and that's our children. But before I leave, I had to share this story in my journey with a group of students at Lake Middle School within Jones's uh, classroom. Some of the hardest critics I've ever had to stand in front of. Didn't laugh at my jokes, didn't understand what I was saying, but Anna Lee, a student in the back, raised her hand at the end of my speech and was like, I love what you did with Anthony. And that's the outcome that I want. Even though Anthony is in the hit that detention center right now for attempted murder, I, we have conversations every weekend. And I remind him of the hope and the dreams that he had when I met him at the very first time, when he convinced me, this Army veteran, to get involved with education. So when he gets out, I'm hoping that I collect enough people and grow our community that when he comes out, we are able to give him the things that he needs to succeed and other students like him. So let me hear it. Honor. Honor. Hard work. Hard work. Humility. Humility. And generosity. generosity. I'll see you downrange. <laughs>